Hello again and welcome back to my channel. So in today's video we're going to construct the actual book for our Pinocchio junk journal. So I already have my front and back cover here. So those are going to be my front cover and my back cover. And then um, I didn't really like the fact that this was written on but it was the same texture, same thickness and everything as these guys. So we're gonna use this for the spine piece. Um, we need to decide how, let me get this out of the way. We need to decide how wide we want our spine to be. This particular book is only going to be two signatures. So you can take your signatures, you can put them down and see about how much room you have. And if you think you can fit them in one inch, then you can do a one inch book. But keep in mind that whoever this goes to, it will be going to get fat. Like it's gonna get fat. Um, something I did realize just now is my, my green pieces of paper here, they're way too tall. So we will have to trim those down when we go and put our signatures together. So they're perfectly wide enough but they're too tall. So I'll show you how to do that. Um, and that's something else that's really great with these process videos is you learn that, you know, people misjudge stuff and they have to alter it. So um, anyway, you have the two signatures and you have to decide how thick you want this book to be. I'm going to go with two inches. So um, my trimmer will cut this chipboard. If you don't have a trimmer to cut the chipboard, um, you can use a ruler, which I don't have on handy. Yeah, I do. Oh, I, lied. I haven't used my ruler in a while because I use the mat a lot. What you can do is lay your ruler down and cut with your straight edge. I'm not going to do that because it's a lot easier just for me to use my, my board, my cutting thingy, my rubber this thing. So I'm going to, I want to use this side for the outside and I'm going to use this side for the inside. I'm going to show you what I mean by that. But I'm going to measure this at two inches and I'm going to cut. Well, I said this was going to cut it, but it works better when it's down or coming down because I'm able to give it a little bit more pressure. So you just hold it tight and then cut it. Okay, mine's not gonna cut it either. Holy crap, this is really hard. <sighs> I got it. So, we have our two inches. Now, um, what I did notice is it's going to be slightly less than two inches because this is not as hefty as I thought it was. Um, I've cut chip board before, but like I said, I'm using this because it is the same width and thickness as the other boards. So basically all I'm going to do here is I'm going to clean this up because it is not straight because I had to put so much pressure on it that it ended up not being straight. So I'm going to line this up and I'm going to get my knife as soon as I find it. I'm not sure that this one's going to work. Uh, yeah, I'm going to break this real quick. And by real quick, I mean not so real quick. There we go. Basically, all I did was I broke it so I would have a fresh new blade so it's nice and sharp and clean. So this is actually going to end up being one and seven eighths, not quite two inches. So you just put it down. Well, see this way, you guys get to see that it can be done with a straight edge and a ruler. And you just keep cutting until it comes off like so. And if there's any stragglers over here, like this one, you just kind of make those straight. And now, also with a, sh with a fresh sharp blade, it's a lot easier to cut, especially that super thick chipboard. Okay, so we have our spine piece. This is extra. Um, you could save this, use it for another spine piece, um, use it for tags, 
that would be kind of cool. Um, it is incredibly thick though, so whatever you use it for, just keep that in mind. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do it like, actually, do I want to do it like that or like this? I think I'm going to do it like this. Yeah. All right. So now that we have those, let's decide what kind of fabric we want to use to cover this bad boy up. Um, oh, let me bring these over here so you can look at them too. So a lot of these fabrics I actually got at Joann's. They were all in clearance. So I got, a, I think I like a half a yard or a yard of each one. Um, so there's this one, it's coffee. Um, as much as I like coffee, I don't think it's necessarily great with the Pinocchio. This one is just general text, so we'll keep that one aside. Um, so that one might be good. Butterflies, eh, I love butterflies, but again, probably not the best thing for Pinocchio. This is something someone sent me. Um, it's beautiful. I just don't think it will work with Pinocchio. Some red, white, and blue. This one actually may not be bad because it's just nature. Um, some pattern, some postage, some more postage, just different. Some old type. Some insects and bugs. Easter, yeah, we're getting into Easter stuff now, so. This one, actually this one will be really cute for the Peter Rabbit one. I'm gonna make a Peter Rabbit book and that'll be adorable for that. So I think we're gonna use the text. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and set this aside for now. Set that down there. All right, so we don't really need that much. So I'm just gonna fold this out and see where I've got it cut. All right, and let's see. We want it to be just a little bit bigger than our spine piece. So I think, let me make sure that this is something I want. Yep, that works. And then grab your scissors and cut you off a big old slab of fabric. Now you can cut it or you could rip it. Some people rip it and they, they like the texture of it. Um, me, I, it doesn't really bother me one way or another, honestly. All right, so now we have our spine piece and we have our fabric that will be going on our spine piece, like so. Now, we do not want this to cover too much of the book. So, this is way too much fabric. We do want a little bit of a gap between the spine and the fabric. We don't want that much of a gap. So, I need to figure out how far in do I want this piece to go. And I think that would look really good. I like that. All right, so I'm going to cut this. There's a little bit of line right here, so I'm just gonna cut straight down that line. And hope that's actually a straight line. Okay, eh. looks pretty good. We're gonna put that right there, like that. Okay. Just like so. Okay. So we are gonna use Fabri-Tac here because, well, it's fabric. Um, you can actually use this little piece of fabric for like ephemera or whatever, so I'm not going to use that to clean my bottle of glue. I'm going to use one of my 50,000, like I need to empty my trash bucket. I'm just going to clean off the excess glue here. This makes it a little easier to deal with. Alright, so we're just going to put a straight line straight down. 
Mm, I think I'm going to do the book. And I'm going to put a straight line, straight down. And by straight, I mean not straight at all. Um, all right, there we go. And the, pay, the fabric doesn't really have orientation, so it kind of goes every which direction. So that makes this part a lot easier. I'm just going to set that there. I'm going to flip this back over. We're going to, uh, we're going to use this as a marker. I'm going to put that there. And then we're going to put this right beside it, like that. See? So it's got a little bit of a gap, but not too much. So again, we're going to put glue here. Maybe. There we go. You want to put a lot of glue because this is going, this is your spine. So this is what's holding your glue or your book together. So you want to make sure that it's nice and secure. Okay, I'm going to hold that. I'm going to put our little divider back up. And then we're going to take this. We're going to put it right on down, like so. Now, we just used our divider, but we still have more. Because remember that scrap I told you guys that you could keep? It can be a divider too, just like so. But again, way too much fabric here. So we're going to trim this up. Um, I'm going to go with about that much. And yes, I, I do that a lot. I'm just like, ah, that looks good. So, hello. I don't know what that was. I'm just going to try to make this a little bit straighter. Again, you can keep that to make uh, ephemera pieces. So we're going to take this and we're going to make sure that it doesn't cover up too much. Looks good. Okay, so we're going to flip it back over. We're going to put glue right along the side here. Maybe. our divider here and it doesn't need to necessarily be any one angle it just needs to be away from this piece here so I push this against our divider line it up on the top and the bottom and push down okay just like so now we are starting to have a cute little book Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to fold these pieces up and we're just going to push them and fold them down like that. I am going to straighten this out just a little bit because you will see that. So I do want it to be somewhat straight. Um, then I don't know if I want to leave that or not. I think I want to cut that down as well. So I'm going to go ahead and cut this down as well. Uh, that's probably a little too much. Hey, come here. Alright, there we go. Okay, and then we're going to clean off our glue again because it likes to boil over because, well, it just does. So we're going to put glue right here across the top and then we're just going to fold it over like so and then push it down okay 
just like that. Okay. And then we're going to do the same thing on this side. Maybe. Possibly. Or maybe. Okay. All right, there we go. It didn't want to come out. It wants to boil over, but it doesn't want to come out when I want it to. Makes sense, right? Okay, we're going to fold that over just like this. And then push. And then you have yourself a pretty little book. Like so. And you can cover this part up with um, really whatever you want. You can do lace. Like, you can do like a little trim of lace right here, right on the edge. Actually, that's kind of cute. I like that. You could also make it go this way. It's kind of nice. You could also do um, like a little less. I don't think I have enough of this particular trim, but you could do a little less feminine and more neutral. That's actually kind of cute. I might do that. I don't have enough for the back though, but I might do that on the front anyway. I really like that. See, I don't really want to cover up the P though. That's the problem. So we'll need something. Um, this is like a pack that I got um, at Good, not Goodwill, but at, um, where did I get this? Um, my brain stopped working. Oh, the antique shop that's over in um, Washington before I left. It just says olds and ends. I think it's supposed to say odds and ends. But I'm really not sure what's in it exactly. I just saw the lace and it's in an antique shop. So I was like, yes, please. So I grabbed it. Um, well, that's kind of cool. Uh, let's see. Hmm. Well poop. I don't think there's anything in here that would be of any use to me right at this point in time. So we're going to shove this back in that bag. Um, I'm going to look through my scraps and such and see what I can find. I may not even cover it up, honestly. But anyway, so there's the book itself. What am I at? 18 minutes. Okay. So that's it. So you have your book. And now when you go to sew your signatures, um, I will show you how to put your signatures into the book. There are several ways to do it. And this is the way that I do it to make it the easiest for me. So um, that will be in the next video. So until next time. Bye guys.